Hey everybody, Steve from the Pinball Room, and today is the day we're gonna get our pinball machine actually flipping. That's right, our flippers, our slingshots, all four of those mechs, we're gonna have them wired up, we're gonna have them talking to the controller boards, to our computer through the software, knocking the ball around, it's gonna be great. Okay, this is like a huge milestone. When I got here, I was just like so excited. I could finally start experimenting with shots, and all that. Okay, so we're gonna walk you through how we got there. A um, few things we need to do in order to get started, right? Like and subscribe, thank you so much. Um, seriously though, we're gonna need a bunch of wire, okay? So this wire I got, I like it, it's colored, it's got this flexible colored housing. I got this off Amazon though, it's on my list, again on my spreadsheet where I'm tracking all my costs. You can go along and see what I'm buying, what, how much money I'm spending into this crazy hobby. This was $13 for 50 feet. I'm sure there's gonna be a better source out there, more economical once we're ready for our final wiring harnesses, etc. But for now, this is working good, I like it. It's 18 gauge, okay, that's what we're using. And we're gonna need our handy, these female spade quick connects. These are 4.8 millimeter size. It's gonna be the perfect size to slide onto those lugs at the end of our coils. Um, I got these off Amazon, 100 of these for seven bucks. Again, don't kill me, there's probably a cheaper source. I, it worked, okay. We're gonna need a crimper to crimp those, okay. This was like 20 bucks off Amazon, works great. Wire cutters, wire strippers, okay, to get the wires ready to go our trusty little nut drivers here just screw some things on um, obviously we're going to need our our controller boards uh, that we're going to hook on but uh yeah okay so with that let's jump into the cabinet okay now if you remember from last time so we've got power from the wall coming in we've got our grounds to our main power supply here the 48 volt and then also running over to our um, smaller power supply which is the switching power supply that goes between 12 and 5 volts gives us both powers then we've got our, our main lines coming down to a fuse um, backed rocker switch power switch right and then the lines come back in to our power supplies okay we talked about that last time so then from there we've got these lines going into our power filter board the fast power filter board with these large capacitors here um, there's great diagrams i've got on my tutorial my google doc that's online free for everybody to go through and view with very detailed instructions some good diagrams here from fast on exactly you know which one of these terminals go where inside this connector so you'll get them all in the right place so make sure you take a look at that I'll throw it up here on the screen also. You can pause and take a look at it. It's a handy. Okay, from there, we now have power. Today, we're going to get power coming out of the power filter board, okay? So with this connector here, we've got five wires that are coming out, and they go over to our nano controller board. This is where we start the communication with the loop network. We handle our lower um, power supply um, items, such as like our 5 volts and 12 volts for our LEDs, everything else we're going to do. It's also the connection to our computer. So we've got a micro USB port here. So it's kind of kind of the guts of the system, right, that you need to get going. All right, and then the main thing we're gonna focus on today, coming out of the power filter board, we've got four more wires, okay? Two blue and two black. And the blues, again, um, I'm using to denote that color is gonna denote my um, 48 volt high voltage lines, okay? You've got two of these for your entire cabinet. So they're gonna come out and obviously we're gonna split them across probably like on a bus to be able to get power to all the items we need. We also um, have these two black wires that serve as our grounds. Okay, for everything. So again, these are gonna run straight into your I.O. boards and the grounds from each I.O. board to the other I.O. board can all be connected like in a daisy chain so everything's grounded properly. Okay, so these are going straight into items. Now, you say, well, Steve, you got these on this quick connect, um, disconnect item here. So I've got this simple little kind of nine pole Bolex um, quick connect. And this is just because you remember in the other um, tutorials we've talked about, um, we still don't know all the final positions of where things are gonna be, right? Where our flippers are gonna be, where the mechs are gonna be. So instead of, constantly like changing the length of wire or having it like crazy long. I just have it going into this right now and then we can disconnect and reconnect this from the play field to take it out as many times as we want. This is a lot simpler, right? Okay, so with that, let me show you the wiring harness that I've got going on right now. So, um, this is it. Woo, okay, I know, not the neatest, but again, we're just in prototype stage. So here's the other end of that quick connect, all right? Let's just connect. And on this, you'll see the same wires and a few others, okay? We've got one blue and we've got a couple of blacks here. So, and then a couple other wires that we'll get to here in a second. But the main thing here is, so we've got one blue. We have two coming out of the power filter, but I'm only actually tapping into one of those right now. The other one's just kind of dead ending inside here where it's safe. And this one's coming and going all the way through. And where do we have it go? What did we say earlier? This blue high power voltage line goes straight to what? That's right, to our coils. Good job, you're listening. So it's gonna run straight to our high power coil, such as a flipper, all right? Or our slingshots, okay? Here's a quick connect already on it, ready to go. 
Now, I've got this to where I've got several of these, okay? We can connect these, we can kind of daisy chain these, right? This is just the power. So we'll go into our left flipper, then we'll connect to our right flipper, and then we're gonna to connect to our left slingshot, okay? And then we're gonna connect through into our right slingshot. And then I've actually got a fifth one here for, I already know I'm gonna have an upper right flipper. There's gonna be a third flipper. Um, honestly, there's probably gonna be five on this pinball machine. We'll see when we get to the end. Um, okay, so I've got those. Those are gonna go straight on to, onto the coils, which I've got down here sitting against the wall, my play field. So let's go through and do that. That's kind of the easy part. And then we're gonna get into actually connecting them to the IO board. Got our play field. The other thing before I throw this in, I wanna explain, um, you might notice here on the side, I've got this handy dandy um, circuit board. So this is the 3208 um, IO board from Fast, okay? Um, this is gonna be the 3208, we'll talk about that, that stands for the number of switches it can handle, the number of coils it can drive. 32 switches, eight coils, all right? Um, which is all we really need um, is perfect for the lower third. If you've got a lot of switches on the lower third in your trough or everywhere else you're going to have, you're going to have about eight different coils. You need to fire a couple of flippers, a couple of slingshots, um, the auto plunge, the trough eject, a few things like that. So this board is going to give you everything you need for that lower third and maybe even a little bit more than that, okay? Um, so I've got it mounted here on the side vertically. I've got these little L brackets that I got from Home Depot, a couple of plastic washers if you can see in there. Probably should have taken this off with some nylon nuts hold in place. That way I'm not putting too much pressure on the circuit board. But I've got it coming out perpendicularly, perpendicular to the play field just to make sure that it doesn't take up room of where switches and slots and lights are gonna be. So that's how I did it, relatively close to these, you know, to the lower third. So I think that's gonna work all right. Um, there's different ways the manufacturers have done it. Find one that works for you. Right now just kinda have it somewhere close but out of the way. Okay, good enough. So from there, we're gonna put this into the, into the cabinet. All right, so here we are. We've got our play field a little bit up more, more up close so we can see. And we're gonna start taking our blue wire and we're gonna start connecting the power, okay? So you got your blue wire ready? Good, let's go. So, um, first question you should have is, Steve, these, uh, these coils have like two or three lugs. Like how do, how do I know which one of these, which wire it goes to, right? That should be your first question, hopefully. Okay, so, on coils, and we had this in the overview. I'm not sure how much you remember that if you've seen the overview video, but if not, go watch that. So when you look at these coils, okay, the flipper coils typically are what call, they're typically called a dual wound, all right? What that means is there's two sets of copper wire spinning around here to create the electromagnetic force. And the bigger, thicker wire, wire is your pulse power, and then there's a thinner wire around, around the outside also, that's the hold power, it doesn't create as strong of a force. That's because when the flipper is flipping, you know, immediately the first time you want to flip really hard and twist that flipper up. But once it's up, if you're holding the button in, it doesn't need much power just to stay up and kind of catch the ball and hold it there. And we don't want to like burn out the coil and use way too much power. So they got really nifty and really smart back in the day. They decided to go through and say, hey, let's go through if we do like two windings, one with the main power and another one with a smaller power, we'll call that the hold power. We'll have a lug for each one of those. Then we can initially use the one that we can use different hardware, different ways um, to switch it over to the lower power to hold it, okay? And then there's a third lug also, right? So what this comes down to is we have one lug where the power is going to come in, the blue wire we're looking at. The other two are going to be just for closing the circuit for either the um, the pulse power or the hold power, okay? I had this down below so you can't see, sorry. But again, see, that's lots of great information, but I still don't know which one connected to, right? Okay, so if it is something like this has three um, lugs, okay, you want to look for the lug that has two wires coming into it. If you look closely, this one has one skinny wire. That's got one a little bit thicker wire. This has a thick wire and a skinny wire on it here, okay? This is the main one that connects to both of those windings. This is the one you want to have your power go to, okay? Now, if it's something like a slingshot where there's only like two lugs and the wire is the same size, like, crap, now what do I do? There should be a little diode, okay? like these guys, these little black diodes. And there's gonna be a like gray or white band on one end, okay? And the lug closest to that colored band is the one where the power is going to come into, okay? And the other one's gonna be the black wire is gonna control it, okay? So you're gonna look for your diode, you're gonna look for a colored band, and you're gonna go for the lug closest to that colored band. If there's three lugs and different wires, you wanna look for, again, these are for, for flippers, the one that has two wires, has both the thick and the thin, that's where your blue wire is gonna go. Back over here. I'm actually gonna run wire power to my first slingshot over here first. It's a little bit harder to see, but there's a slight gray line on this side. So this is the one where I want power to come into, okay? And then I can have 
that one be the power for my other slingshot. And now I can come over here, and for my flippers, this is the one that has both wires, so I know that's my power. And this one over here has both wires, that's my power. And then I've got a fifth one here, Ram, again, because I already gone far a little bit further along than what you're seeing right here. I know there's going to be another flipper right about over here, an upper flipper. It's going to make some other, other shots. So we'll, we'll just leave that out of the way for right now. Okay. All you really need for you are just the four. Okay. Make sure you've got powered all four and you're all set. Let me just double check. I definitely have those. Yep. Double wire. Double, okay. We're good. All right. Check in. Cause if you get those backwards, boom, things, uh, th things blow up and break and it's not good. So double check, triple check, make sure you know which one. Um, Okay, so now we've got power into those four. Yay, that was easy. Okay, these other lugs, like I said, these are going to be for closing the circuit so it knows it's going to bring power in and know which one of these coils is going to go to the, the hold power, the pulse power, or for the slingshots, just there's only one set of power that's just going to turn it on. So those black wires from our power filter board, if you remember, I said those need to run straight to our I.O. board. Okay, so where are those coming from? Let's look at our harness here. Yay, look at all the black wires. All right. We'll walk you through it one by one. It's not that crazy, okay? One at a time. So let's talk about this for a second, okay? This little connector here, this Molex connector. This is why I recommend it so highly you get the starter bundle from Fast with those extra connector, um, connections. There's a, like a connectors pack you can get for like another 30, 40 bucks. And it has these little plastic connectors that line up with the circuit boards and all the little pins you need to put on the end, again with that crimper, that will slide in here and then connect to the circuit board. If you look at the diagrams, I'll throw it up here on the screen. We know that on the circuit board, <laughs> not sure where I'm putting it on the screen, but we know on the circuit board that there, this long thing goes on the kind of the, the top right of the circuit board and the two connections on the very far right, whichever way that is in the picture, on the far right, um, that's where the grounds need to come in from that power filter board, okay? So we don't just like solder them on. We're gonna use this handy dandy connector. So those two go in here, all right? They're gonna come in here. And then these other wires now, these wires have quick connects on them. These are all wires are specific to the actual um, coils we want to control, okay? I've got a handful in here. We're gonna focus on the first six is what we're gonna focus on, okay? Because we're gonna need six for our four items, two per flipper coil, and then one more for each of the slingshots, okay? Now, one of the things, you maybe we need to jump ahead for a second is, um, it does matter which wire goes where, um, as far as in here. And not so much it really matters which one goes where. These first two grounds have to go here on this end. That does matter. The other ones, flippers, slingshots, you can kind of put them however you want, but you just need to know which one you're doing because they're going to line up to numbers on the circuit board, which then are going to line up to um, numbers and items we're going to write down inside our config file, which then tells the software, hey, this little wire here controls left flipper, this controls left flipper um, hold power, this controls right flipper. Like We need to know all that in our config file, okay? So let's start with spot zero, okay? It goes from zero to seven, those are the eight. So spot zero, I'm gonna have go to my left flipper, I'm gonna have it go to my main power, which is the thicker wire, okay? So it's gonna be my middle, my middle lug here. The second wire is gonna go to my left flipper, hold power <laughs> okay and then my third wire is going to go to my right flipper high power pulse power and then my fourth wire is going to go to my right flipper hold power okay and then the last two here are going to go to and which ways do I actually have these which ones which yes this is going to go to the, um, <laughs> the next one, number five, goes to my left slingshot. Slide that on there. And then number six goes to my right slingshot. Okay. And I've got two more because these are going to go to my other flipper that are going to be up here. If you remember, I talked about it, I have another flipper. So we'll forget about those for right now. You're going to have those six, all right, just to get things started. Now, hopefully I didn't confuse you. I mean, I'm doing this kind of backwards, right? I already had them in here. The way I did them originally, uh, myself, I did the quick connect, I ran some wire, and I saw, okay, about how much wire do I need to reach my circuit board over here, okay? This one I made a little bit long. This guy is a little bit more appropriate, okay? Again, these aren't our final wiring harnesses, but I just need to make sure they can reach here. Everything reaches, I made sure I had a little bit of slack, okay? 
so they can all come over here. And then once I had the right length, then I went through and I put on the special pin connectors that came with the starter bundle and then pop them inside here, you know, zero, one, two, three, four, five, write them down, left flipper, power zero, left flipper, hold power two, write that down somewhere or take a note on your computer, something like that. Um, again, we're gonna need that for our config file. Now, spoiler alert, you don't have to make your own config file if you don't want. If you wanna follow along and use exactly the same, um, uh, you know, setup that I'm doing, I've got a config file, it's already put together, it's already tested and working. I have it in the, in the description down below. You can just download it, throw it into your directories. Again, my, uh, my Google Doc tutorial tells you like exactly the path you should be using. Uh, I'm doing a Windows installation currently, I'm probably gonna switch over to Linux, so I'll update it for both. Right now, I've got instructions for Windows and kind of what your, um, what your path needs to be for your software is installed and then where your actual um, pinball machine folder is installed. We'll get into that. Anyway, so I guess the important thing is just, Make sure you know which number, which one of these pins corresponds to, to which um, coil you're actually activating, okay? Now, once we've got all that, we're all good to go, and we can go ahead and we can connect this to our I.O. board. Okay, so we've got the high power coils all hooked up to power and to the I.O. board. So what's next? We need switches to tell us when those need to be fired, okay? So I've been using blue wire to denote my high power voltage lines black for all of my grounds. I'm gonna continue having black be the grounds for the switches, and then green be the primary color for the other side of the switches to be able to run into the I.O. board and tell it when that switch has had a contact closed, which then will complete the circuit, which then the software is gonna know, oh, this switch is for the left flipper button, which means I need to drive spot number zero in the, co in the coils, because that's connected to the main power for the flipper coil, all right? So we gotta get those connected. Now, if you remember, looking down here in the box again, I had this harness, right? And I'll just connect it again for a minute, okay? This is the, the part that came from the power filter board. Okay, what are these other green and yellow black wires? Well, I said green was for switches, but I ran out of green when I did this, so I also, green and yellow are for the switches, okay? This is all coming from the cabinet, all right? To connect to the play field. And again, you don't have to do it this way. You can run directly, but I think it's way simpler to be able to have a way to disconnect your entire play field. So these other um, wires here, they're all running to the front of the cabinet. These are just connected to my flipper button switches, all right? The leaf switches for the flipper buttons, okay? So I've got, from all this, I've got a black wire, okay, which is the ground, it goes to my right flipper sw um, leaf switch, and then daisy chained over to the left flipper leaf switch, okay, that button. So that's my black wire, okay? And then I've got a green wire, okay, going to each switch, and then the right flipper button, I've got a two-stage flipper leaf switch in here, because I'm gonna have an extra flipper button on the extra flipper on the right side, so there's two wires, so it knows when each one of those contacts gets gets closed, all right? They should both be green, but I ran out of wire, all right? So we got two um, switch wires here, one ground, and then from the left, we've got a green for the switch, and then another black for the ground. So those would typically, okay, go straight in to this guy, okay? And this guy, and I'll throw up the diagram, goes into our I.O. board up here, okay, on the first set of switch inputs. Remember, there's 32. This has the first eight. It goes from zero to seven, okay? Similar setup as before. The two black wires, okay, are gonna be grounds that need to go on the right side of that connection, okay? They're gonna plug in, okay? Again, I'll flash up the diagram now, okay? So the part that's outlined in red, that's where this bank of switches gets plugged into. All right, so they're gonna get plugged in. The black ones are gonna be on the right, okay? And then I've got five other wires here, okay? That should really all be green, but I ran out of green, so we've got yellow and green mixed, okay? Now, the first couple of greens are just um, coming from the switches inside the box for the from the flippers, right? And then I got a yellow that's also coming from there. Remember, I ran out of wire. And then I've got two more yellow wires, okay? And these two yellow wires, they each have two connects on the end. They're daisy chained together. These are gonna be the inputs for the slingshots. Remember, the slingshots have leaf switches next to them also, okay? So when the ball hits that, okay, and the switches are closed, and the machine knows, hey, fire the slingshot. Now, it doesn't matter, there's two buttons, right, for the top and the bottom of the kind of that slingshot rubber. It doesn't matter which one gets hit, right? They're both gonna cause the coil to fire, which is why they can be daisy chained together. So no matter which one gets hit, okay, no matter which one gets hit, it's a single signal, single input on your switch bank going in to tell it, hey, this left slingshot switch got hit, fire the slingshot coil, okay? 
Now, I've also, we need a ground for those slingshot switches, all right? And this can be a single black wire, okay? This is our second black wire plugged into here. Single one daisy chain, this has got four connections, you know, the two connections for the left slingshot, the two connections for the right slingshot switches, okay? That's all that is. So, again, to recap, for a switch, you're going to have a ground, and that needs to come into here, and the ground can be common. You can have the ground go through and connect to all your switches, and then it comes into this, okay? And this will get plugged into the board, all right? And then you need the actual other side of the switch, all right? Each one of those is gonna be a specific wire per switch, okay? So we've got one for the right flipper, for the left flipper button, for the other part of the right flipper button, and then for each of the slingshots, all right? And those wires need to also come up directly into here, okay? And again, zero through seven, so we're gonna keep track of them and number them, all right? Again, my config file has all that for you, but keep track of them if you're doing your own. And then that gets plugged into the circuit board. Okay, that's it. Now my wires <laughs> might get confusing because I've got wires from the switches coming to my disk connect, remember? And then from there, continuing on. But if you really consider this all together, right, uninterrupted, what's going on? The wires are coming from the, flip, flip, uh, from the switches straight on through into this guy okay and into the circuit board let me know if that doesn't make sense okay try to make that more straightforward than the first like five times i recorded it okay now once we've done that okay we've got all of our coils powered and wired to the io board we now have our switches grounded and wired into that molex into the io board okay everything is now connected to this io board so that's all the wiring we need to do for right now yay okay hopefully it all made sense you're able to follow along so what's left then you might say steve okay well this circuit board um, is just by itself doing nothing by itself okay it needs to get connected back to our nano board that's where you're going to get some ethernet cables okay this is how all the different boards talk to each other if you remember back we talked about it being a set of node boards or a loop network right and these boards are going to be on a loop you're going to start at your nano controller board that small one had the micro usb input it also has two ethernet jacks one labeled in one la is labeled out i'll throw that diagram on the screen really fast okay so the one that's labeled out we're going to take one of our cables we're going to plug it into that jack and we're going to run it from that to the very first node board in a pinball machine now right now we just have the one okay so we're going to plug it into and the boards are labeled the one that says in okay and we're going to plug that in if I get it going the right direction, okay? So now we have a cord running from the nano controller to that node board. So the nano controller can send signals to this board. Now we need to complete that circuit. And so then we plug in another one into the out. And that one, when we're all said and done with our full entire pinball machine, that's gonna run to our second node board, okay? Because we're probably gonna have more than one. And then from there, we connect another one to the third node board. Right now, we just have one node board. So it's the first and it's also the last. So you go from your nano controller, it's out into the first node boards in. And then when you get to your last board, and for us it's the same board, you go from the out port back to the in port on the nano board. Okay? And now they'll all be connected. So for us, it's just two wires. One from the nano board here and then back to here, or from here back to the nano board. Okay? Now those can communicate. Okay? So now we're all 100% done with all of our wiring and everything we need to do there. The last thing to do now is gonna to be to take a micro USB cord, okay, connection. That's the wrong one, but I've got one here <laughs> nearby. We're gonna take a micro USB cord, we're gonna plug it into that nano controller and then plug that into the USB port on our laptop. Okay, and the next stage is to go through and install MPF, Mission Pinball Framework. Now, I'm not gonna go through, this video is going on long enough. I'm not gonna go through, walk you through all the steps to install Mission Pinball Framework. They have a very comprehensive, very detailed, very solid um, tutorial that'll walk you through, give you everything you need. I didn't really notice any gaps in that part of the tutorial, okay? It was more like around just kind of connecting and wiring everything around the fast hardware, hardware where I saw some gaps um, when I was looking. So, go through, follow that installation guide, get MPF installed on your computer, okay? Make sure you've got the right version of Python. It, it walks you through all that, okay? It's really not that difficult. They have a lot of great instructions. Once you get to that point, everything is installed and ready to go. That's when you want to work on your config file. And the MPF installation tutorial does a good job of walking you through and giving you examples and explaining how your config file needs to be created. So feel free to go through and do your own from scratch. 
or if you've been following along and wiring your things in the same um, all the same terminals that I've been doing feel free just to grab my tutorial my, my file for my tutorial and dump it into yours okay um, again I've got everything written out in there as far as for the coils as far as for the switches everything's in there um, follow along on that tutorial and get the file um, put into the right directory on your computer and then start up MPF all right and once we start up MPF we should then be able to see this all right so I don't know if you heard that noise or not it was really quiet I tried to crank it up but that doo -doo -doo, that, that was Windows recognizing the nano controller everything's communicating we start up MPF, we saw the little splash screen, which you can edit out, edit out to say whatever you want, throw in your own artwork later on, we'll get to that, right? Um, moment of truth. Let's push the button, let's see what happens. We're working, let's throw a ball in here. Woo, slingshots. <laughs> Again. All right, guys. So, huge milestone for us. We've gotten there. I'll turn this off. Um, yeah. Now I just—I mean, this keeps getting funner and funner at this point, right? We've got it flipping. We've got it working. Now we're going to start prototyping out the actual shots of our pinball machine. Whew. Long video, long process, but it's worth it. I hope you guys liked it. All right. Stay tuned for for more videos, more fun as we get into the Led Zeppelin theme and all the different shots we're making. Hope you've been enjoying it. Catch you next time.